On this channel, we've made multiple videos in the past talking about quantum computers. Quantum computing is an experimental technology that could theoretically have some use cases in the future. In November of 2024, hype around quantum computing started to increase. The share prices of quantum computing related stocks surged as investors wanted to get a piece of this emerging technology. As a sign of just how crazy the quantum mania became, some penny stocks started to surge just because they had quantum in their names. For example, two companies called Quantum Corp and Quantum Psi saw their share prices skyrocket despite the fact that their businesses have nothing to do with quantum computing. Quantum Corp is a data storage company, while Quantum Psi is a protein sequencing company. But every bubble must pop eventually. On January 7th, 2025, NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang spoke at the Consumer Electronics Show. At the question and answer session, an analyst asked him about quantum computing. Huang responded that it will likely be 15 to 30 years before the world sees any useful quantum computers. These comments caused quantum computing stocks to plunge. This was a big disaster for the pure play quantum computing startups. The situation got even worse when Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg made similar comments on the Joe Rogan podcast. Yeah, and then what if that gets attached to quantum computing? Um, I'm not really an expert on quantum computing. My understanding is that's still quite a ways off mm -hmm. from being a like a a very useful paradigm. I think Google just had some breakthrough, but I, I think most people still think that's like a decade plus out. So my guess is we're gonna have pretty smart AIs even um, even before that. Most quantum computing companies rely on issuing new shares to fund their operating losses. For them, keeping investor hype high is a matter of survival. Shortly after Jensen Huang's comments, D-Wave CEO Alan Baratz went on CNBC to give his side of the story. Alan, thank you so much for joining us and making the time. Tell us what exactly Jensen Huang, the leading authority on the future of computing, is getting wrong here. So, Deirdre, thanks for the opportunity to be here. I very much appreciate it. Um, I, I think that Jensen Huang is a very smart individual, and he's built an amazing company. Uh, and he may be the authority on many aspects of computing, but certainly not all aspects of computing, and certainly not quantum computing. In this case, he's dead wrong. And the reason he's wrong is that we at D-Wave are commercial today. We have companies like MasterCard or NTT Docomo or Patterson Food Group or Ford AutoSan that are using our quantum computers today in production to benefit their business operations. Not 30 years from now, not 20 years from now, not 15 years from now, but right now, today. According to Mr. Baratz, MasterCard, NTT Docomo, and the Patterson Food Group are using D-Wave's quantum computer today in production to benefit their business operations. In this video, we'll scrutinize the quantum use cases that are supposedly happening today and try to reconcile them with Jensen Huang's statement that useful quantum computers are many years away. D-Wave is a quantum computing company that was spun out of the University of British Columbia in 1999. In 2011, they launched the D-Wave 1, which they claimed was the first commercial quantum system available on the market. Its intended customers were large enterprises, not individuals. Each D-Wave 1 quantum computer reportedly cost $10 million. The first customer to buy a D-Wave 1 was the American defense contractor Lockheed Martin. Shortly after the sale, D-Wave's then-CTO Jordi Rose gave an interview to HPC Wire. Rose explained that they had already used their quantum computer to solve optimization problems arising from building software that could detect cars and images. This process outputs software that can be deployed anywhere, mobile phones for example. Selling the first quantum computer to Lockheed Martin was a big milestone. They're excited to help Lockheed and future customers to tackle complex problems traditional methods cannot resolve. Just based on that statement, it looked like things were going pretty well. D-Wave was already using its quantum computer for artificial intelligence software, including detecting images of cars, and they were already selling their quantum computers to blue-chip customers. Remember, this was all happening back in 2011, almost 15 years ago. Throughout the 2010s, D-Wave largely flew under the radar. They were not a publicly traded company, so the general public wasn't really too interested in them. In 2022, D-Wave went public by merging with a SPAC. This gave us our first look at the company's financial statements, and they didn't look good. In the nine months ended September 30th, 2022, the company generated $4.8 million of revenue and incurred an operating loss of $38 million. They made their first sale to Lockheed Martin in 2011 for a reported $10 million. 
So after their first 11 years of commercialization, it looks like their revenue has been declining. We don't know what Lockheed Martin was doing with their D-Wave 1 quantum computer, but whatever it was, it probably wasn't very useful. D-Wave's first decade of commercialization has been disappointing to say the least, but when they went public, they told investors they were on the verge of an inflection point. They forecasted that their revenue would soon start growing exponentially as their quantum computers started solving real-world problems. Unfortunately for D-Wave's investors, this exponential growth failed to materialize. Since the company went public, their revenue has stagnated at approximately $2 million per quarter, while their operating losses have expanded to more than $20 million per quarter. As D-Wave massively underperformed its own financial forecasts, investors lost confidence and its share price collapsed, falling as low as $1. In November of 2024, its stock price surged higher. This rise in share price did not seem to be related to any news specific to D-Wave itself. It was instead caused by general investor optimism around the quantum computing theme. The general quantum rally accelerated on December 9th when Google claimed to have a technological breakthrough with their Willow quantum chip. D-Wave has been selling quantum computers since 2011, and its CEO now claims that customers are using the quantum computers for real-world business applications. If this is true, why is their revenue so minuscule? As of the end of the third quarter of 2024, D-Wave claimed to have 76 commercial customers, including Fortune 500 megacorporations like MasterCard. Yet in that quarter, they only generated $1.9 million of revenue. This works out to $25,000 per customer, which is pretty minuscule for an enterprise computing solution. MasterCard probably spends more on disposable coffee cups than they spend on D-Wave. Not only is D-Wave's revenue minuscule, it also has declined in every one of the past three quarters. If quantum computing were such a revolutionary technology, you would expect that customers would be willing to pay more for it. Back in 2023, D-Wave CEO was confronted about this when he gave an interview to Bloomberg Television. Alan, I'm going to play devil's advocate for a minute. You've 60 commercial customers, you've been delivering computers. I look at your revenues and they are low. If quantum computing is in the real world, why are you not booking more sales as a real commercial product? Sure. So, so first of all, commercial quantum computing is still early. In other words, even we were not commercial until a little over a year ago. So we've achieved that milestone and we are now getting started building the business. He explains the lack of revenue by saying that they've only been commercial for a little over a year. It takes time to build the business. This interview was given in September of 2023. A little over a year ago would have been mid-2022. The problem is, as early as 2020, D-Wave claimed to already have numerous commercial customers who were using their quantum computers for real-world applications. What Advantage gives us is the ability to seamlessly integrate quantum into our business problems. We have in excess of 4 million different decision variables that all have interactions with each other. We've been able to decrease the amount of time to get a result from 25 hours down to seconds. So now quantum computing isn't something that we can use once a year or once in a while. We can use it on a daily basis embedded into our business solutions. The main application that we work on is doing uh, quantum chemistry simulations. One of the biggest things that made us work with the wave system is actually the accuracy of the results. We always get very precise calculations. We used a DB machine to determine the allocation of the TV commercials to maximize the brand recognition of the viewers. Our optimized version gets better you know, sales rift compared to the conventional one. Let's look at the timeline of D-Wave's commercialization claims. They sold their first quantum computer all the way back in 2011. At the time, they said it was already being used to solve optimization problems, and they were excited to help Lockheed Martin tackle complex problems that traditional methods cannot resolve. Fast forward 9 years to 2020, D-Wave publishes customer testimonials of numerous customers who claim to be using their product. So clearly they were commercial in 2020. Arguably, they've been commercial since 2011. In late 2023, they needed a way to explain their pathetically small revenue, so they retroactively say they've only been commercial since 2022, contradicting the customer testimonials they themselves published in 2020. They always claim to be on the verge of an inflection point for revenue growth, but revenue declined throughout 2024. 
Large companies like Lockheed Martin and MasterCard spend hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars every year on research and development. They might spend a few tens or maybe even hundreds of thousands of dollars to tinker around with D-Wave's quantum computers. If quantum computing was really the revolutionary technology that D-Wave would have us believe, it could create a huge amount of economic value for these Fortune 500 companies. The fact that D-Wave's revenue remains minuscule strongly suggests that their technology is not yet commercially viable on any meaningful scale. Alright guys, that wraps it up for this video. What do you think about quantum computing? Let us know in the comments section below. As always, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Wall Street Millennial, signing out.